Cumberland Phoenix currently leading the table on four and zero. 12 wins to four is their game WL ratio, Skyline Magic and Aurora or Aurora? or Aurora. I don't know how you'd intuit that necessarily, but uh, their form speaks for itself. Uh, they do have a 3-0, uh, but that was a forfeit up against Vesper. And as you rightly pointed out, Galgan, we've passed Halloween, but eerie, spooky, the identicality of the results between these two teams, because their opponents got a forfeit against Vesper as well. Absolutely, and it goes deeper than that, but as we head over to Robert Morris University and see who they'll be facing on the opposite side, obviously, we'll wait to see exactly who that roster is. We're who keeping is it? it an eerie mystery, <laughs> keeping with the vibes here. Rad moves Tempo Nova, and Rad moves again, duplicating themselves. The spooks never stop, and Robert Morris University, I mean, they've got a massive roster, so you can't fault anybody for thinking that any one of these six players can appear on the pitch at one time. Cumberland is the same kind of story. And again, it's Champions Division. It's players that we are kind of starting to see. Maybe day one, day two qualifiers for RLCS, some other bubble events, things like that. I know I recognize some like Skyline and Aurora from Cumberland, but Robert Morris University, again, I said it's a big name. It's not a school that you want to, you know, put by the wayside and really underestimate. Uh, so many players that sometimes they want to deploy them twice. We'll figure out who is heading onto the field in due time. I must apologize, uh, chat audience, on an etiquette front. Uh, itching the nose, of course, uh, in front of you all. But, hey, nobody ever gets off sneezy here in Rocket League. It's always mm. a hard grind to the finish line. And I think nothing... Uh, there's been no greater a case to really propose this sort of methodology, this way of thinking, uh, by the results of Cumberland and Robert Morris themselves. They both have got fantastic records. Mm -hmm. I mean, goodness, they've not dropped a series to this. <laughs> you would hope so. <laughs> well, yep, I... Leave it to me to say you would hope so when watch it be a sweep. But obviously both of these teams, you know, undefeated when they haven't had to play. So it's a bit different of a test this time around, but we're well underway here in game number one. The time for formalities has all but passed. And I have a feeling this first goal is coming rather quickly because the defenses aren't really too keen on staying in front of the net too long. And speak and you shall receive. Robert Morris University get us started and it's rep to score first. Remind you to uh, remind me to tip you for your Mystic Meg sessions, Galgan. Lovely infield pass, simple put away in the face of the keeper. The entire net that aim for was harder to miss than to score. It's a great start. 35 seconds. Give yourself that. Oh dear, that momentum. If you ever had any, but rep completely nullified there in the corner, and that does open up some decent space here for Cumberland to try and get that counter cooking here off the initial kickoff. It's another opportunity similar, just other side of the field. But no real punch, no real follow through just yet. You think Cumberland might be biding their time for the perfect opportunity to strike the Tempo Nova off the top corner. Going to make it just a bit harder. It's going to be a shot of confidence for Cumberland Phoenix to see the defense flapping around a little bit uh, haphazardly for Robert Morris University. Uh, deservedly so, by the way, to have a player called Skyline and then not playing in the Nissan Skyline. I mean, I mean, that's that's that's. It's criminal, I would say. Criminal game. It's just, you know, it's style points dot. It's obviously the play of the only points that matter are the points on the, on the scoreboard. But we all know, and we will all silently judge until Skyline makes that card change and completely carries the entire lobby, Robert Morris and all. But right now, all Robert Morris really need to be concerned about is breaking back out of the zone. They have one solid sequence early on, but Cumberland, for the most part, have regained possession quite nicely and found some good chances of their own. They're looking the stronger going forward, most certainly, and Magic taking the long way around here. Through the corner, up it goes. Here's Aurora. Backup support, but from the back forward comes Rep, and it's well taken into the midfield. The bump on Magic makes way for a, another press. Comes to an end pretty quickly, though possession given away cheaply. Magic now got something to do here. It, it, it kind of hits the musty, doesn't quite. It's not the cleanest hit. Infield, nice block here from Aurora, and it hits the midfield line. No, no, no squares quartered between these two teams, Galgan. Half time. It's a solid response, though, from Cumberland again on the transition out. You can tell that they have that skill because Robert Morris. 
They're kind of just waiting for the ball to fall right to them with the musty clear off the back wall. You can afford to do that on defense at the midfield line. But now, as soon as that pressure ramps up and Cumberland start to find faster touches, you've got to move with that pace. Rad moves trying to do just that. Oh. My word, done it to two defenders. The challenge not enough. It still hits the far post and in. He's got the rad moves like Jagger, and there was nothing Jagger about this trajectory, was there? Heading straight for the dunk opportunity. Aurora puts their car up in the correct position, but the car needs to be facing head on towards the ball. That's what gives you the best opportunity of winning those 50 50s. And because it wasn't head on, the 50 was lost, but that's a very quick return. My goodness, the crossbar and posts, Galgan, have been doing more defending than the Robert Morris, sorry, than the Cumberland, sorry, yes, than the Robert <laughs> Morris University players themselves. Getting my tongue in a twist. <laughs> Could not agree more though. Cumberland certainly trying to find that shot accuracy. It's going to be key for the series, you can tell. On the other hand, Robert Morris, again, not to play both sides of the aisle here, but it's nice that they found some quick transition goals. They don't really need to stock up offensive points too far. They can just kind of take their first chance, have it be solid enough. A demo will certainly help your chances. The skyline from the sky takes that aside. Tempo Nova now over to the side wall. Again, back center, one, two, three. Beautiful wow. sequence there. Feels like icing on the cake already. It's just the quality of the chances that they're creating. This is a lovely infield pass from Rep. In a horrible position for a defender to be, even if they were in a better starting position than where Aurora was. Because if they're on the line, then they've got to think, okay, well, should I go up for the challenge? By the time you've thought that, generally speaking, you're going to be too late because it's closer to where their onrushing attacker will be. Finally, finally a bit of joy down the other side of the pitch. Didn't even include a demo. Simple kickoff win here. Skyline runs through and gets that follow-up touch before Rad Moves can defend the near post. Remember that lovely luminosity goal explosion too. 121 to find two goals. Not impossible, Galgan. RMU have got to be wary. I don't think it's impossible either. Good capitalization off the kickoff as well. The set design play was there for Robert Morris and it was just a hair okay. too late, but all of a sudden it's all falling apart. Tempo Nova answers back just as quickly rep just a simple touch off the side and skyline is alone on an island back there sure it's a missed touch but there's really not much else you do aside from coddle that ball to the side wall robert morris picks it clean and that's the that's the first real error in defense from cumberland phoenix as well I and mean, that's going to be the kicker for them that's the first proper mistake that we've seen immediately punished and you've got to give credit to to armu here on just how accurate do they be? Their conversion rate, fantastic. You don't have to have a lot of shots as long as they go in. And uh, that has very much been the case of this game number one. Maybe going to take a little bit of time for Cumberland Phoenix to, to grow into the offensive side of things. Because uh, as I was about to touch upon earlier, for me, they're missing demos. For me, they're, bump, they're missing bump plays. And then when they do get their shots on target, more often than not, they're hitting woodwork. You can really see the puzzle starting to form, but feels like we're still looking for edge pieces for Cumberland before we can get into the meat of it. Under 30 seconds to go. Game number one. This one all done and dusted, it would feel, for Robert Morris University. Just trying to apply a bit more pressure. Make sure Cumberland can't get another one for the road. Try and build up some stock going into game two. And for the most part, I mean, that's what you see here. It's a double commit on the back wall, but Robert Morris University don't really care too oh. much when shots ring off the post as much as they have here for Cumberland. There's not really much else you can do in the small microcosm of one game of Rocket League. Robert Morris University will grab the early series lead as they are already just spells disaster before you can even see it written down certainly uh, and i think that that final attack from phoenix really sums it all up where magic is pre-reading a much bigger hit off the lip than what actually ends up happening and if he just stayed on the floor easy tap him right so here's a good thing right here's a good news for the phoenix fans out there we start again mm -hmm. not in the series but it's a clean slate it's game two 0-0 zero, zero on the scoreboard. You have a chance to get that go-ahead goal to rubber stamp your authority on proceedings. But the, I think for me, the order of the day is pretty clear. Keep that clean sheet first and foremost. The opportunities will come to you naturally unless we get that from Tempo. No more like bossing over with that sort of aerial prowess, but nothing comes of it on this occasion. There's only so much that you can see in terms of making the comeback happen, even though it's only one game. But Robert Morris University, on the other end, like not only is it just quick transitions, but they feel solid mechanically right now. Everybody's going for air dribbles and fantastic shots. Rep has 
somewhat of a free lane here to shoot this through. A little bit of resistance from Aurora late to the jump, then underneath the skyline, but gets caught looking up into the sky, and all of a sudden it's in the back of the net already. They listened to you, Coach Galgood, and they decided to steal the advice away. They're like, oh, hold on. Let's let's, let's hasten our movement. Mm. Let's get into the air. Let's speed things up and let's catch them off guards. And it's worth to treat a roaring out. Hassled on the backboard. There's not going to be much love shared on that occasion. But downfield, the love is most certainly shared between Rep and Co. They've hit the backboard and they're keeping possession sweetly. Tempo. Ah, loses out. And that's a good challenge from Aurora. That's going to be on target. Was it not for that final touch? All matters what Cumberland do here. And they've got a decent chance to keep this play cooking, but it's found the one gap they didn't want it to go. And Tempo Nova out of the corner, a second touch. Skyline makes a good block. This could connect as well to Aurora. Oh Big God. double potential, but it rings off the waterfall zone and away out from the danger for Robert Morris University. They come back on the counter. We're flying back and forth here, and Cumberland have certainly had their looks, but just as quickly, Robert Morris get their own. Oh, that's nice from Skyline. Crosses a dangerous area and escorted to safety for Robert Morris University. Double demo in the midfield. 2v2 briefly. Skyline wins the race over Rep. And now it's Magic. Gets the shot away. That's the right decision, but Tempo Nova was in the correct place. Gets that block. Aurora. And then Rad moves. Skyline meets it midway. Another demo on Tempo Nova this time. Oh, Magic completely misplays that. And that kind of brings the move to a stuttering halt. Robert Morris University clear. Difficult for Cumberland. Oh, the big bump! Going through. Skyline, you felt it coming a little bit there. A, a couple of the offensive sequences for Cumberland looked like they were waiting for a big mistake from Robert Morris, but you have to create it yourself. And that's what Aurora does. Gives Skyline the lane. It's not much, but it's enough to score. I was certain that the move had covered to an end. We see Skyline just a couple of moves back, not actually moving up as the third man and having the confidence to say, OK, I'm going to make this challenge and the pressure is going to continue here. We can we can encapsulate this entire movement in a siege formation. And you know what? That confidence, that ability to be able to move into positions which are, are limiting Robert Morris University on the counter. It's starting to play into their faces now. Cumberland Phoenix get a very quick second to take their first leads of the series. Can they now run away with it or are they going to revert to what happens? You have to like what they've done though. Both of their goals found off of sequences taking advantage oh, of one oh, position very nice. and now it's just a field show. Magic putting on a showstopper of a goal here. Third for Cumberland on a quick run and my goodness completely undoing the defense. Never believe it's not so, Galga, because oh, whoa, whoa, it's magic, baby. Cumberland Phoenix are indeed running away. However, say from Aurora, that's how quickly things could turn, folks. Could very quickly become 3-2. Could very quickly become 3-3. And then all of a sudden you're heading to overtime and Robert Morris University find themselves with a second game win. Case in point. It's so difficult right now. Robert Morris University, every time the lead attacker, you have to back them to be exactly where they need to be. And Cumberland Phoenix have gotten their goals off of counters, trying to nullify that initial attacker and get a quick clear. But when you allow that unmitigated space for whoever's going to take point of Robert Morris University, you put yourself in some hot water very, very quickly. Nearly a response off the kickoff from Cumberland to try and get their two goal lead back. But it'll be closing time soon enough, and Robert Morris, they're starting to circle for this equalizer. Get the clear first. And there it is on transition somewhat. Aurora taking out Rep. Aurora taking out Rad moves. It's not quite bonfire night, not just yet. Actually, wait, yes it is, it's November. But wait, hold on. Remember, remember the 5th of November. I forgot the song! It is one night away! Trust me! Once you get near 30, folks, that's when your brain starts to go. But all of the neurons firing for these kids. 60 seconds left, one goal game. Anybody's game, Gal. That's why Rocket League is the best game. If you have one bad showing, you mentally reset, go next. That's what Cumberland Phoenix have done thus far. 
trying to equalize this. Nice center pass here. Skyline can't grab it from the crossbar. Saved aside by Tempo Nova, but Aurora is still relevant and plenty of boost. Gets it centered all the way through. Maybe a bit too much, however. There's a bit of a clear lane, but Skyline was in the right spot at the right time, and Magic will at least have somewhat of a challenge against rad moves for this ball. Keeps it in the zone, and Cumberland just trying to lock things down, give Robert Morris as little chance as possible to bring themselves back in. Skyline can't finish it up. Just need that one chance, Robert Morris University. And they got themselves over time. Phoenix, one more, and he's put it to bed. Rep, that's a double commit from Cumberland Phoenix, all on magic. Great clear, great distance from that ball away, but it's back into orange possession. Lovely dispossessed from Aurora, but is Rep the pop-up in field it's aurora again skyline said it before galgan right place right time and it's hit the backboard now surely going to hit the floor sooner rather than later double commit panic from robert Robert university still up magic with the cherry on top not quite but that's all they needed to do three two tie series it's Game certainly having the confidence in themselves to be able to dismantle a counter-attackers. Ultimately, that's where the majority of those RMU goals came from in game number one. It were, it, they were counter-attacks, and now Cumberland Phoenix is turning the entire narrative on its head, like you say, but they can't afford to get too savvy with it, because the moment that they do, Robert Morris University will be sure to strike. Have to see. All comes down to what feels like a very pivotal game three for both of these teams, where I have to agree with your sentiment. It feels like game five is written in destiny for these two teams. Who's going to take that first step up? Robert Morris University is looking for some little bit of an early start here, trying to convince themselves again that they are in the driver's seat for this series. Locked out in the corner. Everybody stacked up in Skyline, trying to drive a wedge through it. Unsuccessful for the time being, but still just playing around with this one, trying to slow things down and take a sneaky shot on at the top of the box. It still pops up and magic Ooh. goes through everybody. Finally, someone, it's Aurora to tap it home one minute in. Rep dropping the bumping, bumping in chat. They are disgruntled with the ferocity of the Cumberland Phoenix attack. They are not going to avoid the dark arts of Rocket League. They are very happy to bring the demos out. And that's part of this momentum swing, swing Galgan. By demoing opponents who aren't necessarily going for revenge tours, you're opening up so many more passing and hopefully shooting opportunities like this one. Oh, magic popping off. It just keeps on coming. Delivering every single time right now. A huge shift Woo! in how this series has gone. And it's all on the back of that Octane Magic with a beautiful goal. Cumberland continue to roll. It really does seem as the minutes go by to be more of a gentleman's sweep. Of course, no sweep at the end of the day. Both of these teams continue their, well, not very spotless runs. They always have dropped a game in all of their series minus the forfeits. But this is going to be a question of who has those bragging rights. There's a little bit of a, a little bit of an off-kilted schedule for both of these teams. Robert Morris U University sitting on 3-0, Cumberland, Cumberland Phoenix on 4-0, of course, at the very top. That one series lost Galgan. It could be in a difference between an excellent back half of the season and the back half of the season where you're starting to question yourselves. Three minutes remaining. Plenty of questions left to be answered. We'll have to see. Slow play again. This series is really starting to grind out here. Both of these teams try and grab as much real estate as they can. Challenge there from Aurora. Kept this one up high. Cumberland certainly with solid possession. Again, just drawing everybody from RMU as far out of the play as they can. But here's the catch out through center. Follow through, denied. Rep the only one again in front of this ball. Oftentimes, RMU just leaving one back to try and defend. You can see how desperate they try to stretch and claw their way back into goal scoring form. They need that bit of an offensive jolt right now to get them going, but they're not finding it when they need it most. Tempo Nova has plenty of time to this ball and passes it center, but nobody can really make much of it. Their defense is outstanding, Galgan. That one mistake they're letting goal number four in game number one, remaining the one blot on the record as we approach two minutes to go in game number three. Robert Morris University knocking on the door. There's plenty at home, though, and they've got everything behind the barricade ready 
to defend away this threat. It's another backboard hit, but again, that backboard is well marshaled. Another pass up towards Rad Moves, who does a whole lot with just one player. Trying to buy everybody else some space here at the top of the box, but RMU again find themselves locked out. Time continues to tick down here with Cumberland seemingly just barreling closer and closer to a series win. Good block here in the corner from Skyline. Again, the efficiency of one player against the rest. Trying to get as much done as possible to allow the teammates to cycle in to advantageous positions. Rad moves, takes to the skies, whole lot of boost, uses it quickly off the ceiling to beat one. A bit wide against Aurora, two on two in the corner. Skyline now over to Aurora back. And Cumberland find their way out of the zone again with a minute to play. Cumberland going to try and lock things down yet again. Aurora. It is just keep away at this point. You got the two goal lead. Every second that ticks by. Another second wasted for RMU. Oh, that's a chance. It doesn't even need to be a chance taken because Magic's initial deflection gets them their third. All it takes. One odd challenge. Rep caught at the near post there. The impending threat of a defender trying to come in for a demolition or some kind of bump makes Rep second guess, and that's all it takes. One quick touch. Like you say, Cumberland Phoenix poised and ready to grab two on the trot and get to match point first. The test papers are out and Robert Morris University are left flummoxed. It's like studying for the wrong science. Oh. That's a lovely bump play. Oh! Oh, I say lovely, perhaps the wrong objective. It was disgusting, Galgan. Yeah, remember back to game one where we saw Robert Morris with a sizable lead just kind of jumping at the back wall, double committing. They didn't care. They knew Cumberland were just going to hit the post anyway. Well, Cumberland Phoenix giving a nice little taste of that same medicine that Robert Morris University tried to administer themselves in game number one. But it's not the case now. Something has changed. The winds are slightly blowing elsewhere now. And Robert Morris University, everything, ball in their court and all to answer. Get some sort of a response going, but it's nothing to show of it. We talked about the clean sheet heading into this game. Well, Cumberland, about five seconds away from securing a solid one here. A beautiful analogy for me to work with there as we head into our break between games three and four, Galgan. Uh, <laughs> wow. Where, you know, it's not so much about controlling the wind but it's adapting to how the wind is blowing and teams once they realize that all good plays start from the back of their zone and progress further yes there may be instances where Cumberland are stepping out of position and finding themselves in awkward spots and that's where RMU want to try and take advantage but right now they don't have that, you know, misplaced confidence. This is a Cumberland Phoenix roster that has now gotten stronger as the series has gone on, only gotten more confident around the midfield line. And when they've got that level established, well, the defensive zone for Cumberland feels like home if it ever was for them. So Robert Morris University, while the playbook seems to have fizzled out for them on the offensive side, you've got to give credit to Cumberland Phoenix for really trying to essentially exclude their defensive zone from the game entirely and make Robert Morris University forget about scoring in the first oh, place. But yes. my word, that's how you respond. Oh, yes. That's exactly wanted what we wanted to see. The little Jimmy, the little Jaggle, the hit on the last defender, Rep putting it away, not bowing to the pressure. That is exactly what RMU needed. And it comes after a great first minute, honestly. They were going punch for punch, Galgan. And now they've got something tangible to work with. So what do they do from here? Nearly grab a second, not to be. Quick counter, but Tempo Nova surely has plenty of time here. Skyline one of the challenge, but it's not really the most advantageous position to go. Aurora has just steamrolled through everybody, however. No double. It's not really where Magic wants to play the first touch. Second lends itself to Skyline, and Magic picks up a demo anyways to try and thin out the numbers for Aurora to go through one on two. Oh, no. Another jump. Oh, it was all right there for the taking, it felt like, for Cumberland, but it falls short. There was a double commit in there as well. Mm. Very nicely saved by the RMU defense, which is, again, starting to buckle. Cumberland Phoenix looking strong, but that's a giveaway. Aurora has to go up. Hundreds are in the bank. 
magic, unconvincing save, but he's been able to corral the ball under his spell. Lovely challenge. And no one there to support him. And a demo more out of frustration than anything. They're looking for another one, Skyline. Aurora going for the flick. Finds the woodwork. Finds the net. Tie game. It's a beautiful second touch here from Aurora under control. But the chaos that was wrought on the goal line resulted in a massive bump there between the two defenders. Robert Morris University, not much else you could do when your teammate is in the way. It's unfortunate to be sure, but hey, it took a lot for Robert Morris's defense to make that mistake and concede that goal. They've at least got that going for them, but they have to make sure that this Cumberland roster does not roll with an early goal. We've got the rule one, and it looks like they're holding it, which is a very bold strategy here as RMU steams the other way. Dara suggests that's going to benefit RMU as well because that Cumberland Phoenix has been working well because the rotations are so succinct. Once you remove a player from that rotation, it can leave you quite a bit more exposed. 2v2, a very different game, of course, the 3v3, as I'm sure many of you will be aware. It's all about the individual prowess. It's about choosing the opportune moment to come up and support your strike partner. And I must, I must admit, it's very confusing seeing Skyline in a red car playing for the blue team it's just another thing that's going to be playing on the minds of rep and rad moves thinking a lot about this car choice for skyline right now i mean there's a very simple solution but we'll we'll let that go it's not really a rule one anymore because they've jumped around and done several flips but tempo nova and magic are getting very familiar with each other so you know what we'll let them have that moment for the time being aurora and skyline are having a real fun time trying to get this ball clear that's a big miss from aurora again it may not feel like much, but it's 2v2. Every little misstep right now matters so much more. There's so much more space afforded. Rep goes near post. Aurora with a save aside. Skyline tries to get in position, but again, Cumberland find themselves trying to just get the ball clear. Skyline finally does to the midfield line. Good challenge, lends it to Aurora, who tries to play it slow. Cumberland felt like they had the green light, but they slowed down at the yellow. RMU are getting very very ahead of themselves uh, they have been let off the hook multiple times from a from a geg and press style of, uh, of attack which does not suit this particular formation football soccer doesn't matter what your terminology is you've got to play with the tools at your disposal almost goes over the top of rad move doesn't it's more couple of phoenix not preying upon the prey the prey have gotten away with it you know what they kind of listened, and I think they answered, to be honest, trying to bait Aurora into that challenge. Aurora had a couple of misses earlier on in that 2v2 sequence, and the one big one that matters most, Skyline's just a half step too far back, and RMU find the goal. Game five now on the horizon after all that, and you have to start thinking what would have been if they didn't hold that very silly rule one, but only 30 seconds to debate that before we head to Champions Field. Phone, there is There's plenty of time still to go and get that one goal. Buzzer beaters, double commit. Oh, oh an egregious double commit. Oh, heads in hand. Pepe not looking happy at all, 2-2. Two, two. You had one job and you sent two workers to the location. Rep tried to do everything in their power to pull it clear, but just a bit too powerful. And we've got that tie ball game again. 23 to play, Cumberland Phoenix. Trying to grab three in a row here in a very important series for the future of this division. A lot of misses at the bottom of the box, but RMU have to search again. Oh, don't get the opportunity to say this too often. They were better. They were playing better with two. They were playing better with two. And 2-2 two, two is the scoreline. And it will remain the scoreline unless we have nothing short of a miracle thrown downfield, hits the floor. Cumberland Phoenix have a lifeline to end this in four. This is going to feel like a steal if Cumberland do end it in four. Robert Morris feels like they've done almost everything in their power to secure game five. A back pass. No. Oh, it goes off the far side. But who else other than Magic to deliver another dagger? The goal scorer of the series here for the Cumberland Phoenix. Robert Morris University grab one, but that's all they get a very quick overtime to end the series it's not often you'll have me on here criticizing the players too much given that of course we're not working with rlcs players i mean they might be rlcs players in the making perhaps 
but not usually on this day. Uh, how to throw away a lead in a series 101 there from, from RM 